Hey y'all, this is Andy Leonard, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. So if you're like me, you remember where you were on February 6, 2018, because that's the date that SpaceX conducted their Falcon Heavy test flight, putting the payload we see on screen into space. So that's the uh, Elon Musk's Cherry Tesla Roadster and a mannequin inside, which they call Starman. And I'm not like a huge SpaceX fanboy or anything, but I'm not going to deny that this is probably the coolest thing that's going to happen this year, right? Just just look at that. That is an image that is going to inspire generations to come and just something really, really, really cool. Uh, so I was thinking about this the other day, and uh, I know that we know vaguely where the Roadster is, right? So we know that it's supposed to be headed out somewhere towards Mars's orbit, maybe out kind of towards the asteroid belt. Um, and I was wondering, is there any way that we can figure out exactly where it is? And if you're wondering the same thing, I got good news for you. It turns out that there is, uh, using publicly available tools. Um, and I'm really, really excited to share them with you. So let's get right to it. Enter the JPL Horizons system. Now, the, the Horizons project is a project of the Solar System Dynamics Office at JPL. And if you remember, in one of the earlier videos, uh, I used a, another JPL tool called NASA's Eyes on the Solar System to show you guys uh, the GRACE satellites and a cool little animation of the Curiosity landing. So this is just another one of JPL's awesome tools that we can use. And what it does, it's uh, it gives us solar system data and ephemeris computation services, and it will let us uh, figure out where stuff is in the solar system. And so there's a couple of different ways we can use this. We can use this by email, we can use this by telnet, but for our purposes, we're gonna use the web interface. So let's go over here, let's go to web interface. And I've already got this pre-populated, uh, but let's walk through and talk about what all the different things mean. So uh, settings, we've got our ephemeris type is vectors. And so I'm gonna reposition the, uh, the window here. So change. And so we have three different types of, uh, of data that we can get. We can get observer table, which gives us stuff in uh, the right ascension and de declination coordinate frame. Uh, we're not going to want to use this. If we wanted to, we could use orbital elements because um, we've talked a lot about orbital elements before. But the, the simplest way to, to map out the location of the roadster is going to be the vector table. So it's going to give us x, y, and z coordinates of uh, where the roadster is. Um, all right, moving on, we've got the target body. And so it turns out there's a whole bunch of stuff you can choose from. So we can choose from sun and planets, we can choose from Jovian satellites, Saturnian satellites, Uranian satellites. Uh, so I've got a little drop down here, it's not showing up, but you'll just have to trust me that uh, it says what I say it says. Uh, Neptunian satellites, other satellites, spacecraft, dynamic points. And so there's a couple of ways to go about uh, changing this. Uh, what you can do is you can open up spacecraft and you get a list of all the spacecraft that they track. Uh, you see it's quite a long list there. Or you can just look up the numerical designation. So for us that's going to be dash 143205 and that'll give us the SpaceX Roadster uh, spacecraft Tesla. Next we need to pick our coordinate origin and I picked the sun, the body center. Now uh, we've got time span. So I picked a couple of hours after launch. I think that the, the actual launch occurred on uh, February 6th, 2045. But I just picked a couple of hours after, so um, we're not going to confuse ourselves with injection maneuvers and stuff like that. And then I picked uh, the day I'm recording. Uh, June 18th um, with a stop time of 3.01 uh, UTC and I'm gonna go in steps of one day so if you want to you can make that a smaller step size you can make it uh, hours minutes um, but for our purposes day is going to be just fine and then we're gonna go to table settings uh, and then we're gonna go into the optional vector table settings we can select our output units. So I chose kilometers and kilometers per second. There's an option for uh, AU, that's astronomical unit, or the mean distance of the Earth from the sun. But I don't really super like working in AU, so I went with 
kilometers and kilometers per second. Uh, reference plane, we're going to pick the ecliptic. Uh, reference system, we're going to use J2000. Um, labels, we want labeling of each vector component. Uh, we're not too worried about delta T. We're going to, it's really important that we pick CSV format and this will uh, become, um, this will become apparent when we start uh, analyzing the data. Uh, now what else we got? There's something just off screen on the bottom here. Object page, include object information slash data on uh, page on output. And that's just going to give us some interesting facts and figures about the spacecraft that aren't uh, necessarily important to our analysis, but uh, it's kind of fun to peruse through anyway. So, um, and then there's just one more thing here. Uh, display output, plain text. Uh, we don't need HTML. You, you can mess around with download and save if you want to, but I'm just going to do plain text. We're going to use selection above and we are going to click generate ephemeris and that gives us this. So let me reposition here the window there. Uh, so we see here that this is solution number 10 revised March 27, 2018. So this data is going to be based off of observations that uh, have been made and they're going to be kind of uh, integrated through uh, basically advanced prediction algorithms that will be able to tell us where it is. So we see some notes here. Uh, the trajectory will be updated as more measurement data is reported and we've got visibility here. So if you know your astronomy, you know magnitude is how astronomers talk about brightness and we got some information here. It's launched on February 6, 2018, 2045 UTC by Falcon Heavy uh, from KSC, Launchpad 39A, and we've got some interesting information here about the payload. Uh, it's got a Hot Wheels toy model in there. It's got Asimov's Foundation novels. Um, and yeah, let's see what else we got. We've got the mass, and it tells us that the trajectory is based on JPL solution number 10, a fit to 364 ground-based optical astrometric measurements uh, spanning 2018, February 8.2 to March 19.1. So that point there, that's just a way of dividing days into uh, to decimals. And so we've got a table of close encounter predictions. And then we've got some other text that uh, pertains to if you want to use the Telnet interface for this, which again, we're not going to worry about it. Uh, now we finally get down here to the uh, ephemeris data. Gives us the target body name, the center body name, uh, etc. And we've got the Cartesian center here of our coordinate system, which is 000. zero, zero. Um, and tells us uh, just some verification that it's giving us the units we want, the output format we want, the coordinate system and stuff. And now we finally get down to the actual uh, ephemeris data. So uh, this is going to be a little bit uh, hard to parse out just because there's so much data, but um, if I can try and make it a little bit more readable to y'all by zooming out. But see, there's still just so much data that it, it all kind of, uh, it's going to have to run together for us to be able to read it. But no worries, um, we're going to basically automate this and we're not going to have to worry about whether we can read it or not. So um, we're given the Julian date, which is a special system of keeping track of the date, the calendar date in text, and we've got X, Y, and Z, which is going to give us just our general Cartesian coordinates. We've got VX, VY, VZ, which is going to give us the velocity. And then we've got these parameters, LT, RG, RR. And so if we scroll all the way down here past the actual um, ephemerides, it, it's going to tell us what it means. So LT is one way down leg Newtonian light time. So that's how long it takes for transmissions from the roadster to get to a ground station on Earth or uh, maybe actually to the to the sun since that's our center our um, that's our the center of our reference frame uh, we've got range uh, distance from coordinate center in kilometers 
that's RG, and then RR is range rate, that's the radial velocity with respect to the coordinate center. So these last three parameters aren't going to be important to uh, figuring out the position, and really VX, VY, and VZ aren't going to be really important either. We're really only going to need X, Y, and Z, and on top of that we're really only going to need um, X and Y. Uh, unless you want to go ahead and try and do a 3D plot, uh, I commend you, go for it, but for now we're just going to keep it simple and go to D. So, now what we need to do is we need to scroll back up here and we're going to start just above EOE, so that's going to be end of ephemerides, and then we're going to select this stuff and we're going to keep on scrolling up, up to right below SOE, so start of ephemerides, and then we'll hit control C and now we're going to switch over to notepad. So now we've switched over to your Notepad program of choice. I highly, highly recommend Notepad++, probably the best plain text editor out there. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit Control V, and we've got all of our data here for us. So um, if you wanna go back and check and make sure that we've copied every, everything over correctly, uh, that's fine, but it's really important that we verify that there's commas here because this being a, uh, these being comma separated values or CSV is going to be really important. So now what we're going to want to do, we're going to go hit file, save as. I'm going to save this to my desktop. I got, I don't think you guys can see my save window, but that's okay. Um, we're going to save it as roadster underscore xy dot csv and it's very important to put that dot csv extension there. Okay, so we're going to save and we'll we're going to go back to horizons and for uh, reasons that we'll see later we're going to get the earth and mars ephemerides as well now back at the horizons web interface all we really have to change is the target body we're going to go ahead and change that to earth look up bodies uh and we're going to go earth geocenter and we'll select that and now what we want to do just to make our output data a, a little bit more pleasing to look at we're going to change the time span so we're going to change uh, instead of this February to June window we're going to change it to a year so we're going to change this to 2019 uh, February 7th 07 and yeah that'll be just about good and we'll use specified times here and we'll keep everything this, everything else the same, vectors, uh, coordinate origin of the sun, table settings, output, uh, kilometers and seconds, CSV format, yes, blah, 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 generate ephemeris. And just like we did earlier, we're going to go down to that SOE, and we're going to start to copy everything after there. So scrolling all the way down, it's uh, because it's a year, there's going to be 365 uh, data points, so we're going to have to scroll a little bit, but we're, we're down here now, control C, and we're going to switch back over to Notepad, and we're going to paste all that good stuff up in here. So, pasted it, now we're going to File, Save As, and we're going to do Earth underscore XY dot CSV. And now finally, uh, we're going to switch back to the Horizons interface where you can see I've selected Mars as my target body and I've changed the time span once again so I've changed it to December 26th of next year and the reason for that is because that's going to be a full Martian year that's going to be the time it takes for Mars to make a circuit about the Sun and um, the reason I'm doing all this is because I want Earth and Mars I want to be able to visualize their orbits over this time span so instead of just seeing a couple of data points uh, for their position with respect to the Sun, I want to see the full path they trace, even if we're not going to see the full path that the Roadster is going to trace in one of its orbits. So uh, now we're going to generate the ephemerides once again, and you know, you know the drill. We're going to copy this stuff, we're going to paste it over in Notepad, we're going to save it as CSV. I don't think we have to go through that uh, un any uh, anymore. So now once we have the R3 CSV files, we're going to want to switch over to Python. 
So now we're over here in Jupyter Notebook, and again, if you don't have it yet, uh, go get the Anaconda package if you want to work with Python. So we're going to start off, we're going to import pandas, which is a data analysis library that'll help us out a lot. We're going to import the pyplot function from the matplotlib library, that's going to help us uh, visualize and plot our data. And we're going to have this little command here, matplotlib inline, that will just um, uh, give us our plot right below the rest of our code. Uh, then we've got the code description up here, blah, blah, blah. And so now we're ready to import our data. We're going to import the Roadster data and we're going to call it DFR. So that's for the uh, Roadster data frame. That's what uh, Pandas thinks of, uh, of CSVs that you import as, uh, thinks of them as data frames. And so we're going to make sure to import with the right file name. We're going to uh, get rid of the header, make sure there's no header, otherwise it'll interpret the first line of data as our header. And then we're going to go ahead and get rid of all of the data except for the X and Y data. So the uh, date, the Julian uh, date and the other date and the velocity stuff and all that other good stuff. We're just going to we're just going to throw that out and we're only going to worry about the X and Y. And then we're going to repeat the process for the Earth data and Mars data. And now it's time to get to plotting. So we um, open a figure and we plot the Roadster data. We plot the Earth data and we plot the Mars data as scatter plots. And then we want to insert a point into 0, 0. That's where the sun's going to be, remember? Uh, so it'll it, it's going to be helpful to us if we have a reference for the sun. And then we have uh, a couple of other things just to make uh, the graph a little bit nicer. And we're going to show it. So let's run shift enter. And yeah, so this is the graph. And so it's kind of uh, uh, hard to see all of in this window here. So I'm going to open it in a new tab. And there you have it. We have our plot here. So we've got the X position in kilometers. We've got the Y position in kilometers. And we've got our legend here that tells us that here's the sun in the center. Here's the Earth's orbit. And so now you see why I, uh, I got the data for a full year. So we have this nice closed orbit. Same thing with Mars. And here we have the Roadster. And it does look like it's making a transfer from Earth orbit out to Mars orbit. And it looks like it's going to go a little bit beyond. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I guess uh, to close, let's go ahead and see what the Roadster's orbit is going to look like after a year. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to get a new CSV file from Horizons that will tell me the X and Y positions of the Roadster over a year. I'm going to save that, save that as the new Roadster underscore XY file, and I'll just run the thing again, and I'll come back and I'll show you what that new plot looks like. And here we are. So this last data point here where the orbit kind of cuts off, that's where uh, the Roadster is going to be, or it's at least where JPL supercomputers are pretty sure it's going to be a year after launch. So this, is, this represents uh, February 7th, 2019. And it looks like the Roadster has come out past the orbit of Mars, it's past Aphelion, maybe somewhere around here, and it's going to come back in towards the orbit of Earth here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, as I did before, I'm going to go ahead and make the Python script available online for you to play with, as with the CSV data. But uh, I highly, highly encourage you to log on to Horizons yourself and look up your own data on the Roadster. Look up your own data on any spacecraft or celestial body within the solar system that you might be interested in and see what you can learn about it, about its orbit and its characteristics and stuff like that. Um, and be sure to let me know if you do, because I'm really interested to see what you all make of this. Um, and that's pretty much going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you had fun watching it because I sure had fun making it and I will see all of y'all next time.